Look closely at this scene. Which parts of the scene did you look at? The photographs on the shelf? The dining table? The kitchen? Here is how 49 people explored the scene in virtual reality. Users saw this scene with a head-mounted display starting from one of four starting points, and the data you see represents their scan paths. We can process the scan paths to compute a saliency map. This map can be interpreted as a probability distribution, modeling the likelihood that a user fixates on certain image regions. Saliency prediction for desktop viewing conditions is an active research area in visual computing and applied perception. However, virtual reality is different from desktop conditions due to the complex interaction of head and neck movement, gaze, and other kinematic constraints. But knowing where people look in these virtual environments is useful for several areas of active research. To further our understanding of viewing behavior and saliency in VR, we recorded almost 2,000 head and gaze trajectories from users exploring 22 stereoscopic scenes in three different viewing conditions. This dataset will be made publicly available. Detail analysis of the dataset can be found in the paper and the supplemental material. Here we highlight the main findings and explain how we can apply them to saliency prediction. First, we find that we can apply existing saliency predictors to VR with simple modifications. One important insight is that users fixate on the equator more than they fixate on extreme angles. We can quantify this equator bias for different viewing angles using our recorded data. We improve the accuracy of existing saliency predictors by weighting the predicted saliency map with our derived equator bias. Second, we find that the user's head and gaze movement are coupled in VR. We show that the head orientation might be sufficient for predicting saliency without the need for costly eye trackers. Third, we show that we can predict time-dependent viewing behavior for the first few seconds of scene exploration. Finally, we find the distribution of salient regions impacts how viewers explore the scene. The fewer salient regions, the faster users look at a salient region, and the more concentrated their attention is. In addition to predicting saliency maps for images in VR, we can also use our method to predict saliency for videos in VR. We can automatically generate representative thumbnails for panoramas. To do this, we predict a saliency map for the panorama, and then we find the window of maximum saliency. We can also use our predicted saliency maps to automatically generate a GIF preview of a VR video. Here, an algorithm uses the saliency map to find high saliency windows with roughly continuous content. Another application of saliency maps is aligning cuts in VR videos. One way to do this is to maximize the Pearson correlation coefficient of the saliency maps of the frames immediately before and after the cut. Using this approach, the two frames before and after the cut are automatically shifted such that the two actors in the frames align. Finally, the bandwidth required by high-resolution VR images and videos is a daunting challenge for interactive or cinematic content. To reduce the bandwidth required, our saliency compression approach retains high resolution for high saliency regions, while compressing less important regions more aggressively. Saliency is important for many VR applications, yet no models exist to analyze and predict user behavior in immersive environments. With this paper, we further our understanding of saliency in VR, we present methods to predict saliency in VR, 
and we outline a number of applications to spur follow-up work in this emerging research area.